that story hit the hit newsstands on like late Wednesday afternoon. That's when people first knew about it. So basically, I I talked to him eight days before the story appeared in front of anybody in the United States. Now imagine what would happen today if I talked to Favre on a Tuesday night. I, I can tell you, first of all, you know, within 15 minutes after I got off the phone, I would, I would put out about three tweets basically saying Favre confesses to Vicodin addiction, uh, you know, log on to SI.com, I'll tell you the whole story in, you know, in an hour. And I'd, I'd sit down and I would write as fast as I could, as much as I could, immediately. And that night, uh, it, it would be everywhere. And that would be Tuesday night. I guarantee you that the PR department at Sports Illustrated would have made a deal for me to go on Sports Center that night on ESPN and tell the whole story. I, if I chose to, I could be on 50 talk shows within the next, uh, you know, 24 hours. Um, maybe I would say it on Sirius if I did the Sirius show the next day, Sirius NFL Radio. Um, and so, in other words, point I'm making is that, you know, what happens today doesn't wait eight days. That's 15 years ago. It feels like 115 years ago. I mean, so my question to you is, and what you need to think about is, what's it going to be like 15 years from now? I, I don't really know what it's going to be like. I don't know how people your age, people who are 20, 21 years old, are going to be disseminating the news in 15 years or are going to be reading the news in 15 years or or getting the news somehow in 15 years. But I can guarantee you it's going to be different than what we have today. I just don't know what it'll be. So the only way for you to ensure um, or to, to, to assure yourselves that you have a place in this news media business, you know, in 2025 and beyond, you know, is to make sure that you're versatile, that you can do a number of things that, um, you know, if you go home and get a summer job and, and have any way possible to be able to work for free for a radio station, even though you never have done radio before, you should do it. Um, you know, and, or do something that, that takes you out of your comfort zone. But the one thing that will always be a commonality, I think, is going to be the way you tell stories um, and the way you gather news. The great thing about the Internet is that you work for a newspaper and they're going to say, hey, you've got 1,200 words in your column, that's it. Or you work for a magazine, hey, this is your space, your space is your space. I'll tell you, they should never have given me the internet because I just, I am the wordiest guy there ever was, and uh, I love being boundless, and I love not being uh, told that the column ha is only going to be 5,000 words or it's going to be 4,000 words. I'd get to bed earlier, but you wouldn't enjoy it as much because the fact is, in my job, especially during the season, I'm working every day. And I'm talking to people around the NFL every day. And I, in the past, before I started writing this column, 70% of that stuff would just die. Just remember, you're in this to report the news. You're in this to basically tell people why things happen, how things happen. Just remember, there's a place here for depth. You know, there's a place in here to tell people about why the world moves the way it does.